Police and security guards, have you ever been called out only to realize it was a seemingly paranormal incident? What happened? Like and subscribe or I'll haunt you tonight. Unarmed security for a residential building here. My site has a rooftop pool and it's really one of the only major things the management gets anal about when it's supposed to be closed. On a chilly night not too long ago, I was posted up in the rooftop stairwell staying warm when I hear a crescendoing fit of laughter that goes to the point where the laugher is gasping and choking. Kind of weird, but not a big deal considering the people throw parties and whatnot all the time, and I could tell it wasn't close enough to be someone horsing around in the pool. Then I just start hearing a bunch of shrieking, and the source of the noise is moving around. At this point, I step out, and I realize it's coming from the rooftop itself, locked up and only accessible by non-security by scaling a concrete wall. The noise stops and I try to start zeroing from where exactly on this dark, slippery, cold-ass roof the noises were coming from. Then I see some footprints on the roof that were not there before. Barefoot prints with no heel print, tiptoeing. Footprints that are dirtier than the surface of the roof itself. Nope my way right back inside, because it was an hour before clock out I'd much rather have something paranormal than a meth head on the roof running around with no shoes. Marine stationed in Japan back in 2010 to 2012, I was military police. One night around 2 to 3 AM, we hear over the radio, uh, any units seeing the light over the water south? It was a marine air station based on the southern tip of Japan. We had no flights coming in or going out that night. Everyone knew there shouldn't be a light flying over the waters. So about three patrol cars met up at the airfield where there was a way better view. Sure enough, there's a light sitting out over the water blinking slowly off and on. Some guys tried to say it was a star, so we had traffic control cameras from dispatch zoom in on it. Turns out it was slowly moving out of the cameras. So while by eye we couldn't tell it was moving, the cameras picked it up. We sat there kind of amazed for an hour before it went away. As we were getting back into the squad car, I took a last look at the night sky and saw a small light dart behind some clouds in a movement that didn't make sense. I didn't tell the other guys, just thought there's no way they would believe me. Months later, I was running on the sea wall and stopped to lay down and catch my breath. Again saw a light, watched it drive into some clouds and then disappear. That was around the time of the tsunami in Fukushima. Super weird. I am a police officer in large city, there are housing projects in my sector that house low-income residents and also some suffering from mental health issues. There's an elderly Haitian woman who calls late at night and swears she can hear ghosts and voodoo spirits in her residence. The first time I showed up with my partner, I told her I would go in and speak with the ghosts and close the bedroom for about 5 minutes. Then opened it, and she hesitantly entered with me. I told her I asked them to leave and they need her permission to come back. She celebrated and said she can no longer see them and thanked us. This woman is otherwise quite articulate and intelligent and always refuses medical help. She will call 911 periodically every 3 to 4 months for similar reasons, and I'll go in with a water bottle with no label. And go in and have her point the location where she saw them and I sprinkle some holy water in the area. She thanks us, and offers us food. We always politely decline and exit the residence. Not a responder, but lived next door to one who is very famous in our hometown for his alien abduction, but there are other stories too. This all went down in the 80s, rural England, and my memory of the exact details are fuzzy. Been a while since anyone has bothered discussing it, small hometown and everyone knows and is over it. The alien abduction story is that he was on the way back from a call out, saw some odd lights on the road ahead and had to stop, a one-track road. He went to investigate the lights as any good police officer does, and next thing he knows it's a half hour later and he's back in his car seat, car facing the other way, some odd substance on him, no lights to be seen. The police dispatch also confirmed that his radio frequency just disappeared for that half hour. The substance was tested and didn't match any known profile. I really have no idea what that really means or what tests were. At around the same time, this officer and some others were called out by a farmer whose cows had disappeared. Yes, very stereotypical cows in a tractor beam story. But the farmer reported them missing, multiple police show up, gate is locked and no cows. They all decide to drive around looking for the cows. 
The paranormal magnet officer reports that thing where you keep trying to drive somewhere, but always end up back where you were when it shouldn't be possible on his route, but they all convene back at the field at the end of shift. The cows are back, though none of the officers found them and nobody called in to find them. And remember, paranormal officer has seemingly been driving past the field on a loop all night. The farmer was also unaware when they called to ask him. Totally sounds like the farmer pulled a prank, except it was raining that night and there was loads of wet mud building at the edge of the field where the gate is, and not footprints or hoof prints, and the cows were dry too. The last story I have the vaguest recollection of, I think it happened some years earlier and the paranormal officer was called to the discovery site. It is mostly about a different guy, a farmhand who was an immigrant who disappeared without a trace and then appeared several days later and miles away, dead with burns and another unidentifiable substance all over his body, dumped at the top of a pile of coal. Again, no sign of anyone climbing up the very precarious pile of coal. And no sightings of this farmhand getting from the farm to a different town, one road, and he didn't seem to be on it at any point. He was in the same clothes, but appeared to have undressed then been redressed by someone else. Autopsy couldn't find a cause of death, it wasn't the burns, and he was like, barely dead, no rigor mortis when discovered. My dad used to work at a military fortress. He wasn't serving or anything, but his company such that it was was based there and as such they had custodial duties to the base. One occasion, I remember him going on about was around New Year one year, and he was working quite late so it was dark when he left. To be honest, I think it was only around 7 p.m., but the sun sets at like 3.30 p.m. in that part of the world in winter. On the drive home, he realized he'd forgotten his phone, so he turned around to go and get it he parked up and walked through the glassy. Over the drawbridge and through the arch which brought him into the main square from where his office was visible on the top floor of the block on the right. He noticed then that the light was still on in one of the end rooms of the office, I recall it was some kind of store room. It was odd he thought, because he'd been the last one out and had locked up, so his first thought was that he'd locked someone in. When he got up there though, the lights were all off and nobody was about. He received his phone in quick order and left in a little more than a hurry. There were other happenings too which didn't involve my dad. On one occasion, his boss came in one morning to complaints from the night cleaner accusing him of peeking at him from behind doors and hiding. Giggling and flicking lights on and off, which was obviously a surprise because he'd been at home all night. The army occupied other floors in the block, and other blocks on the camp, and often complained about loud parties from the office which never happened plus soldiers regularly seeing apparitions among countless other spooky things. I was a caregiver in a retirement home for six months at the beginning of the pandemic. We had one patient, let's call them Robert, that was mute so when they called us because they needed something, of course we would just hang up and go to their rooms. I had been on vacation for a week, and my co-workers and I didn't have the chance to go over what had happened while I was away. We had 24 patients for two caregiver, so we would split the unit in half, 12 residents for each caregiver and we would help the other if needed. So, the first shift after my vacation, I was taking care of Robert's unit. Few minutes after I arrived, I got a call from Robert's room. So, I hang up, finish with my current patient and calmly walk to the room. When I arrived, the door was locked which was really unusual since Robert usually leaves the door open. I knock, unlock the door and open it. To my surprise, the room was pitch black except the television that was turned on. It took me a few minutes to realize that Roberts wasn't in the room. So, I called my co-worker and asked, have you seen Roberts? And that's when they told me. Oh yeah, hum, he passed away two days ago. Alright, weird but not the first time that our system glitches like that and we get a phone call in empty room. I go on with my shift, like nothing happened, I had left the door open. When I was helping another patient walk to the kitchen, when we passed Robert's room, they said, Hi Robert, I thought you were at the hospital, welcome back. I was 100% convinced that the room was hunted now. We would get a call from that room a few times a week until Robert's was buried and after that, nothing else happened in that room. We've also had another patient calling us because there was Mike sitting in his chair every night. Mike was the name of the patient that passed away in that room. They had never met. I worked as private security for a hotel under construction in 2019. My shift was from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. I was a level 1 guard, so I couldn't carry anything beside a flashlight, of course, I didn't adhere to that rule. The construction workers left the site by 4 p.m., so I was on my own. 
Sometimes the drywall guy would stay late, and we would smoke his weed pen. He usually left by 8 p.m. I would usually spend my shifts in either my brown SUV, that kind of helped me blend in the background and catch intruders off guard, or in one of the half-furnished hotel rooms and do a full-site sweep every hour. My first day went fine, a little boring, but there was nothing to report. I used that time to walk around the whole site, all five floors and even the roof. The building had most of its windows aside from the safety windows at the end of each floor, so the building wasn't too secure. The second day, I swore that I was hearing whispering, this was a bad part of town so I feared getting shanked with a needle more than ghosts. I checked each floor, every nook and cranny, every hour, on the hour till I left at 6 pm. The whispering continued on the third day, it sounded ethereal like, I felt like I could have made out a syllable every once in a while. I have a religious background, so I feel pretty safe from what's out there. On my fourth day, I met the drywall guy and we talked about the site and shot the hell for about an hour till he left, but not before I got the highest I've ever been in my life at that point, but I digress. I asked if he's ever heard or seen any suspicious activity while he stayed late, he told me of some homeless and thieves they had to chase out, hence the reason I was hired I guess. I asked if he's had any creepiness happen to him as well and he gave an anecdote of hearing laughter and talking sometimes when he's not paying attention. The rest of the night went well because I kept my high ass in the SUV and watched Iron Man 1 and 2. The sixth day was different, the drywall guy wasn't there when I arrived in shift, so I was on my own. I didn't hear the whispering at all until about 1am I was on the third floor walking room to room, in almost total darkness aside from my flashlight, when I heard a light sniffling like when you have a cold. I froze in place and just listened trying to hear for details, that's what being raised by a marine does. The sniffles continued for about two minutes. Then it built up to a light weep like a girl who scraped her knee, or like the witch from left for dead. I slowly made my way to the staircase to follow the sound, it sounded like it was coming from the first floor. As I was about to enter the stairwell, I heard a huge and sudden bang from where the weeping was coming from. It sounded like scaffolding toppled or a printer fell over. After the demonic jump scare, I froze and listened to see if I can hear running or shuffling or anything, nothing. I slowly made my way to the first floor and checked for any sign of damage, there was nothing. I did my rounds as usual but totally on edge. The next day was uneventful, light whispering but nothing of note. A few days later at about 11 pm, I was sitting in my SUV facing the lobby of the building when I thought I saw movement in my peripheral vision. I put my phone down and looked in the direction it came from. I was about 60 feet away when suddenly, a flashlight turned on revealing a tall man wearing a dark trench coat, bandana face cover and was wearing a huge backpack. This guy was decked out, so I did not want to interact with him. I blasted him with my flashlight and turned on my SUV, and flashed the bright. He was gone, I called the cops and had to wait a bit for them to arrive. One cop showed up and we cleared the hotel, room to room and there was no one found. I spent about another month at that post, with not much activity occurring after that. One creepy detail about the building is, about 20 days in, I found a crawl space underneath the stairs. There was a false wall with a 7 feet wide and 5 foot tall room with drink containers and fast food bags everywhere. That post was an experience and a half. Would totally do it again. I was working night shifts as a security guard from 11 pm to 6 am in a two-story office building that had probably 50 to 80 workers all in cubicles during the day. It was only myself there during the night. I was stationed at the front door where their switchboard desk is, and I'd do a patrol of the entire building every two to three hours. I always heard weird thuds and people walking. I even checked to see if I was right, usually I'd hear something around 3.15 am. I ended up getting used to it since nothing was ever there. The weirdest thing that happened was on my third patrol roughly around 3.30 am. As I walked on the second story, I noticed some of the ceiling tiles were gone, and two of the roof hatches were completely opened. I didn't notice any of this on my earlier patrols. When I told morning staff, they had no idea why. Later I talked to the other guard who used to work there for years, older gentleman and religious, he's also noticed many weird things, but he didn't want to talk about it. Other things have happened such as computer screens coming on, coffee machines turning on randomly, radios randomly turning on. Couple times I'd sworn things were moved because it looked different from earlier patrols. It was an easy gig, but I'm sure the place was haunted by something. I've been a security guard for two years. Around two months in, 
I was stationed at a hotel, unarmed except for OC spray, where addicts had been breaking in, trashing rooms, shooting up in rooms, and threatening staff and guests with knives. It was a relatively nice hotel in a pretty nice area, so the situation was kind of odd. My job was to patrol the halls, particularly the third and fourth floors where the incidents had been happening. This was 2020 at the start of COVID, so the guest amount was limited to maybe 30, and each floor had about 50 rooms on it. The guests were only roomed on the first two floors. I think the most that were ever there when I worked were five. The hotel was shaped like a bird with a straight center strip about 50 feet long, then both hallway wings would angle back and were maybe half a football field long each. These were some long-ass hallways. It began with a room light being on every single time I arrived. There was one guy who ran the overnight front desk and one custodian who left when I got there around 10 p.m. Each one assured me that absolutely no one went up to the third or fourth floor to clean or do anything. Not guests, not staff, just the attics, but there hadn't been an incident since our company was stationed there. About 20 rooms had been trashed, and none of them were touched in the month I worked that site. When I'd get there, it became a routine to go up to room 439, on the left wing, and turn the light off. Sometimes, it would come back on on its own and I'd have to shut it off again. And these were flip switches, so they were being turned on intentionally, it wasn't an electrical issue. For maybe two weeks, that's all it was, just an odd occurrence. That hallway always gave me a sick feeling, but I couldn't place why. And that room sank my stomach every time I entered it. It felt like the room from 1408, like it was going to trap me in there if I didn't hurry. It was also the only room at the end of that hallway that was untouched. Six rooms had been broken into, two of which the doors were broken off the hinges, and trashed. 439? Spotless, directly in the middle of the others. Every time I checked it, something was slightly out of place. A drawer would be half open, a picture crooked, a pillow off center. Didn't matter that I fixed it each time, another thing would change. My third week there is when it got worse. I went to turn the light off as always and then after clearing the other floors went for my usual patrol outside. On the sidewalk at the base of the building under where 439 was, a rabbit hopped out from a bush directly in front of me, looked up at me, looked up at 439, then hopped away. I took it as just a cool little experience until it began happening every single time I walked the lap around the hotel, which I did every hour. I started to get the feeling that it was attempting to send me some kind of message, but I, despite being a pretty open believer of the supernatural, didn't want to believe the sick feeling I got from 439 so I brushed it off. Later that week, I was walking the floor of 439 when my flashlight began to strobe. It got worse the closer I got to the room, and upon unlocking the door and crossing the barrier to the room, the flashlight died, leaving me staring into the pitch black of this room that sickened me to my core. I closed the door and went down to talk about it with the front desk clerk as we discussed supernatural occurrences the previous few weeks after the light became a constant issue, and he was determined to see this for himself. He locked the front door and followed me up to the room. I thought to myself the whole way up, great, now it's gonna work and I'm gonna look like a paranoid crazy guy. I kid you not, several steps down the hall my flashlight began to strobe and got worse as we got closer. I unlocked the door and put my hand over the barrier into the room, and the light died instantly. He started freaking out and turned the light on in the room and wanted to look around. He told me he felt sick just being in the room which is something I hadn't mentioned to him that I feel every time I've gone in that room. He decided he wanted to get out of there as soon as possible, and said he'd see me later. The night went on and around 4 AM, I went into that room one final time and said, look, I'm done coming in here. I don't know what kind of evil stuff is in here, but leave me the hell alone and go back to where you came from. That was a mistake. Maybe 10 feet down the hall was the emergency staircase, which I always took back down to the first floor. Two steps down the stairs, I heard the door to 439 open and slam and loud footsteps stomping towards me. As I turned, the stairwell door opened, and three final footsteps thundered towards me, then stopped. All I saw was the stairwell door slowly close as I stumbled down the next few steps in an absolute panic. I told the desk clerk what happened, and for the final week of our contract, I didn't even go down that wing of the fourth floor, and half the time, I didn't even go to that floor at all. I mentioned the basics of the supernatural occurrences to my patrol supervisor and several other officers, and they all told me they'd felt sick in that room too, but apparently I was the only one who antagonized whatever was in there, oops.
I have no idea what happened, but despite having had several supernatural occurrences in my life, that one was by far the most terrifying towards the end. I haven't been to that hotel since, and I'd like to keep it that way. I had just finished my initial military training, basic, eight, a few other classes, and got sent to my first duty station. My unit was at NTC for pre-deployment training, so I met up with the rear echelon. I get issued my room and spent three very disturbed days and nights in the barracks with weird stuff happening like gear not where I left it, locked drawers being opened, the microwave turning on by itself, stuff like that. My roommate who I knew throughout training showed up on the fourth day, and I told him something along the lines of, watch your stuff, someone's been messing with my stuff and I don't know who. So the fourth night comes around and myself and my roommate secure our room and gear and go to bed. Gotta be up at 5.30 for PT, so it's an early night. We lock all our stuff and go to bed. I woke up around 1am cause my blanket had fallen to the ground, and I was cold which was weird cause we were in the south in summer, so it's always hot. I hop down to get my blanket and I notice my armoire is open, so I open the lock, close it, lock it, and get back to bed. I fell back asleep pretty easy, but I woke up again at about 2.30 and all my stuff and my roommate's stuff is thrown around the room. I wake up my roommate and he's pissed cause someone is messing with us and can't figure out who it is. We clean it up lock our stuff and go back to bed. I woke up a third time at 3.37 and we're not alone. I can hear my roommate snoring, so I know it's not him. I sat up and saw someone in the little kitchenette area with the fridge open looking in it. I was freezing again, I was about to say something as the soldier turned around. My eyes had a moment to adjust to the bright light, and then I started recognizing gear like the L-shaped flashlight on his shoulder, his Alice pack with magazine holders and canteens, boots and fatigues, this dude was combat ready. As my eyes reached his face, he turned a bit and I could see it. Half his head and helmet were gone, blown off by the looks of it. I'm so scared at this point. He closed the fridge, walked across the room keeping his bright green eyes on, opened my front door and walked out. As he exited, he turned back around and said to me, be safe. I didn't sleep the rest of the night. I didn't wake my roommate up. I just sat up in bed for about two hours till I had to get ready for PT. 6.30 rolls around, so everyone is outside the barracks in formation getting ready to start PT and the acting first sergeant says, hey, not chase, you good? Looks like you seen a ghost. I replied with, negative, I'm fine, first sergeant good to go. About halfway through PT, he comes up to me and asks me what's wrong because I'm visibly shaken up. I told him I was fine just couldn't sleep last night. A few others asked if I was okay and I just lied and said I was fine. I really wasn't and they could see that, but they let me be. After PT ended the acting, first sergeant pulled me to the side and told me to, speak freely, openly, and with all confidentiality and off the record, what is wrong? I told him that if I told him what happened, he would think I'm just crazy. He assured me it was off record and once again said, talk to me, you seriously look like you've seen a ghost. That got an awkward chuckle out of me and I began to tell him my story, and when I got to the part about his head, the acting first sergeant lost his mind. Who the hell put you up to this? This is not funny, etc. He smoked me for about 30 minutes, made me do push-ups, mountain climbers, stuff like that, all while yelling at me that I'm a piece of shit. Finally after about 30 minutes of that, he says, look at me in the eye, and swear on everything that you love that you're not lying to me. I told him I was not lying, it happened. So he says follow me, so I do. We get to the command office which I had never been in and they were obviously locked. He takes me behind three locked doors and three rooms I had never stepped foot in, and when he opened the last door, I saw it. It gave me chills, it still gives me chills, but plain as day, there's the soldier's portrait behind the commander's desk. I froze and said, that's him. Acting first sergeant, the guy who assigned me that room, told me who it was. He was a corporal in the unit on my unit's first deployment to Iraq and he died in an eye attack that took off part of his head. I was the first soldier to be assigned that room since it belonged to the deceased corporal. He forgave me and I forgave him and he told me some stories about who this guy was. I deployed with that unit just a couple months later and spent 12 months fighting in that place. I nearly died I don't know how many times. My vehicle got hit with IEDs and rockets, and it always made me think of that corporal. I survived more things than most people can image, and I always felt like that corporal was keeping an eye out for me. Not everyone in my unit was as lucky as me. 
three from my company didn't get to come home. 